Hello everybody. Today we're going to be cleaning data using pandas. Now there are literally hundreds of ways that you can clean data within pandas, but I'm going to show you some of the ones that I use a lot and ones that I think are really good to know when you are cleaning your data sets. So we're going to start by saying import pandas as PD and we're going to run that. And now we're going to import our file. So we're going to say data frame is equal to PD. So that's pandas dot read underscore. And we actually have this in an Excel file. So we'll say read, oops, we'll say read Excel, do an open parentheses and we'll do R and then we'll paste the path right here. And now we're just going to call that variable. So we'll call data frame and we'll actually read it in and look at the data. So let's scroll down here and let's take a look at this data frame or this Excel file that we're reading in. So right off the bat, we have this customer ID that goes from 1001 all the way down to 1020. We have this first name and everything looks pretty good here, except in this last name column, uh, looks like we have some errors. We have some forward slashes, some dots, uh, some null values. Um, so definitely gonna have to clean that up because we don't want that in the data. We have a phone number. And it looks like we have a lot of different formats, um, as well as NAs, not a number, um, just lots of different stuff. So we're going to need to standardize that. So clean it up and then standardize it to where it all looks the same. Um, we also have address and it looks like on some of these, we just have a street address, but on some of the other ones, we have like a street address and another location as well as a zip code in some of them. So we'll probably want to split those out. We have a paying customer, uh, which is yes and no's, and some of those are not the same, so I'll have to standardize that. We have a do not contact, kind of the same thing as the paying customer. And we have this not useful column, which we'll probably just want to get rid of. Okay, so the scenario is, is that we got handed this list of names, and we need to clean it up and hand it off to the people who are actually going to make these calls to this customer list. So they want all the data in here standardized and cleaned so that the people who are making those calls can just make those calls as quickly as possible. But they also don't want columns and rows that aren't useful to them. So things like this not useful column, we're probably going to get rid of. And then ones that say do not contact, if it says yes, we should not contact them, we probably will want to get rid of those somehow. So that's a lot of what we're going to be doing to clean this data set. Normally, the very first thing that I do when I'm working with a data set most of the time, except very rare cases when you're actually supposed to have duplicates, is I actually go and drop the duplicates from the data set completely. All you have to do for that is say df dot drop underscore duplicates. So they make it super easy for you. Let's just run it. And up here is our original data set. We have this 19 and 20, and those are obviously duplicates. They have the exact same data. It's just a duplicate row that we need to get rid of. If we look right down here, we no longer have that 20. We now just have one row of Anakin Skywalker. And of course, we want to save that. So we're just going to say DF is equal to and DF. So now it's going to save that to the data frame variable again. And now when we run this, our data frame now does not have any duplicates. That's definitely one of the easier steps that we're going to look at. Uh, things are going to get quite a bit more complicated as we go, but I'm starting out, you know, kind of simple so that we can kind of get a feel for it. And then we'll start getting into the really tough stuff. So the next thing that I want to do is remove any columns that we don't need. I don't want to clean data that we're not going to use. So if we're just looking through here, you know, they may need, you know, first name, last name, phone number for sure. Address might give them some information of where they're calling to or time zone. So we want that. This not useful column looks like a pretty good candidate to delete. And it's very easy to do that. We're going to go right down here and we're going to say df dot drop. We'll do an open parentheses. Drop just means we are dropping that column. And we can specify that by saying columns is equal to. And then we'll paste in that column that we want to delete. So let's run this and see what it looks like. And it literally just drops that column exactly like we were talking about. It no longer has that column. Again, we want to save that. We can always do in place equals true. Um, if you follow this tutorial series, you can always do in place equals true and that'll save it as well. But just for our workflow, most of the time I'm going to assign it back to that variable um, just for keeping it the same 
Really quickly, I wanted to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this entire Panda series, and that is Udemy. Udemy has some of the best courses at the best prices, and it is no exception when it comes to Pandas courses. If you want to master Pandas, this is the course that I would recommend. It's going to teach you just about everything you need to know about Pandas. So huge shout out to Udemy for sponsoring this Panda series, and let's get back to the video. Now let's kind of go column by column and see what we need to fix. And we'll start on this left-hand side. This customer ID to me looks perfectly fine. I'm not going to mess with it at all. The first name at a glance also looks perfectly fine. I don't see anything wrong with it visually, which is a good thing. Um, although sometimes that can be deceiving and it can cause errors down the line, but we're not going to uh, assume that there are errors in here. Now let's look at this last name. Now the last name, obviously, I'm, I'm seeing some obvious things, things that we talked about when we were first looking at this data set. We have this forward slash, which we definitely need to get rid of. We have null values, so not a number right here. We have some periods as well as an underscore right here. So all those things, I think we should clean up and get rid of it so that when the person is making these calls, you know, it's all cleaned up for them. So how are we going to do that? We can actually do this in several different ways, but let's just copy this last name. The first one I'm going to show you is strip and we'll write it kind of like this. We'll say data frame and then we'll specify the column that we're working with because we don't want to make these changes or strip all of these values from everywhere. We only want to do it on just this column. If we do this and we don't specify the column name, it will apply it to everywhere. So if we're trying to do these, yeah, let's say bu -bu -bum, these underscores, maybe that would mess with something else in another column. And we don't want that. So we just want to specify just this last name. So let's go last name dot string dot strip. Now what strip does, and let's see if we can open this up really quickly. No, we can't. Um, but what strip does, I was just, I was hitting shift tab in here to see if it could bring up, um, you know, some of the notes on it. But what strip does is it takes either the left side or the right side. Well, L strip takes from the left side, R strip takes from the right side and strip takes from both, but you can strip values off the left and the right hand side and we can specify those values. Now for what we're doing in this column, we can just use strip because as you can see this forward slash, these dots, as well as this um, underscore are all on the far sides. If there was a value like swan underscore son, the strip wouldn't work at all because it's not on the outside of the value or the word. So we can use strip. I'll also show you how to use replace and replace is another really good option for things like this. But let's start with strip and just see what it looks like and see if we can get what we need done. So let's just run this for now and see what happens. So it looks like nothing has changed because again, we're not specifying any specific value just by default. It's only taking out white space. So like spaces that shouldn't be there. That's what it does by default. Now we can specify within this exactly what values we want to take out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say left strip and let's try to take out these dots real quick. So we're just going to do a parentheses dot, dot, dot. Now let's run this and see what it looks like for this one. Otter, it is now gone. So those three dots were there before. Let's just show it. So they were there. And then when I ran it like this, now they're gone. That's what the L strip does. It takes it only off the left hand side. Now we can also do a forward slash. So we'll do something like this and it'll get rid of the white. But as you can see, now we aren't taking out these three dots. So they're still there. Now, is it possible to do something like this? where we put these values inside of a list. Um, let's try it. So we'll say just like this, one, two, three, let's run it. And no, it doesn't. Um, this L strip actually sits within the, the realm of regular expression. So if you've ever worked with regular expression, you know, it gets very complicated, very complex. So you want to keep it kind of simple, especially with these values where we're just taking a few out. So what we're going to do is we're going to do dot, 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 and we're going to take it out one by one. Now, in order to save this, because we want to save this, we want to take out that value. We don't just want to say data frame equals because that would be uh, very bad. What this would say is now this data frame is only equal to these values that we're seeing right here. We want to only apply it to this column. So we're going to go like this. So now when we do it and then we call the entire data frame, it's only applying this to this one column, the last name column. So let's run it. And now when we go down to Potter right here, 
it's cleaned up. So we're gonna do the same thing, but for those other values. And we'll do it just like this. We'll do a forward slash and it's a left strip. And then we'll do, I'll do the left strip on this underscore to just to show you that it won't work. And then we will go on from there. So it's not pulling it because we're looking at the left hand side only. We need to use R strip. So now let's use R strip. And now that looks perfect. It has no underscore. So that's how you can use strip for either the left side, the right side, or just strip by itself, which covers both sides. Now I showed you all of that because I am going to show you a different way to do it. Um, and I apologize because I somewhat lied to you earlier. Um, let's run this right here. Actually, we're just going to pull it in like this. We're going to remove the duplicates again. Bear with me. We're going to drop that column. And then now we're sitting with that data frame again with those exact same mistakes. I just wanted to reset it for a second. There is a way uh, that you can do this. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of show you how you can do it. You can do this right here. And we'll say so we're now again, we're just looking at this column, just this column, and we're using strip. And let's get rid of R because we want to do apply it to everywhere. You can input all of those values individually and it will clean it up. So let's say we want to get rid of numbers. We'll do one, two, three. Then we could do the dot. So that's going to be for our period or for our dot, dot, dot potter. We could also do the underscore and we can do the forward slash. So we put it all in one string right here. Now let's take a look at this. We'll get rid of this really quickly. Now let's take a look and all of them were removed. I showed you how to do it before because that's at least how my mind would think about it. I'd think, oh, I can put it in a list and run it through this L strip or this right strip and it would work. Um, but that's not how strip works. You have to kind of combine it all into one value. So uh, yes, I deceived you, I apologize. But now when we call data frame and we assign it to that column, so the last name column, we're assigning what we just did to this last name column, everything should look perfect. And it does. So our customer ID, first name, last name are all cleaned up. Now we're gonna come to a much more difficult one. This is probably, if I'm being honest, the hardest one. I said we were going to work up, but this is probably the hardest one of the whole video, working with phone numbers. And look at all these different types of, of formats. I mean, it is, um, it's not going to be fun. And imagine, you know, there's 20,000 of these. You can't just go and manually clean those up. You need something to kind of automate that. So that is what we're going to do. So let's go right down here. We'll copy the data frame and I'm going to pull it right here. So now we need to clean up this phone number. What we want is it all to look exactly the same unless it's blank and we'll keep it blank. We don't want to populate that data, but we want all of them to look exactly like this one. And what we're going to do is right off the bat, we're going to take all of the non numeric values and just completely get rid of them, strip it down to just the numbers. So this one, two, three dash six, four, three or forward slash will just be the numbers. Same with these bars and these slashes and everything. All of these will just be numeric. Then we'll go back and reformat it how we want to format it, which will look exactly like this one. Um, but we just want to do it for the entire column. So let's go right up here and we're going to try replace for the first time. So let's do phone number. Do it just loops. That's not what I wanted. So we're going to do a bracket. Let's say phone number dot string dot replace, just like we did before. Now we're going to use some regular expression in here and I'll kind of do a really high overview, although I'm not going to dive super deep into the regular expression. Then we're going to do a parentheses. And within there, we're going to do a bracket. Um, I can't remember what this is called. Is it called a carrot? I think it's called a carrot. Uh, but we're gonna, I'm just going to call it that. It may not be correct, but I think it's a, an upper arrow. So it's an upper arrow, a dash, oops, a dash Z, a dash Z, and then zero dash nine. Now at a super high level, what that carrot or that first thing is doing is saying, we're going to return any character except, and then we specify anything A to Z, A to Z, upper or lower case. And then actually, I think this should be like this, A to Z, uh, and then zero to nine. So any value like A, B, C, one, two, three, those are not going to be matched. It's going to rematch all of them except these values. And then we're going to replace them by saying comma, and we're going to replace them with nothing. So this is just an empty string. 
So literally we're taking everything that is not an A, B, C, a one, two, three, so a letter or a number. We're replacing all of that and then we're replacing it with nothing. So let's run this and see what it looks like. And it looks like that worked properly. Now we do have this NA because we had an N dash A for, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe that was Creed Breton. Um, but it worked for basically everything else. We're gonna go through the entire process and then at the end, we'll remove any values. We want them to just be completely null. We, we don't want them to even see NAN and wonder what that is. We just want it to be blank. And we'll do that at the very end. So now that we know that that worked, let's assign it. We'll do DF phone number is equal to, and then we'll say data frame. And this looks a lot more standardized than it did before already. But now what we want to do is try to format this. Um, and I've done this many, many times. I always use a Lambda. You can definitely use a for loop. I just, I don't do it that way myself. So I'm gonna show you how to do it using a Lambda. Let's get rid of this. And we're gonna say DF phone number. We've already done that. I'm just gonna get rid of it. Now we're gonna say DF phone number. Then we're gonna say dot apply. We'll do an open parentheses. And then this is where we're gonna build out our Lambda. So we'll say Lambda x colon. Now this is where we're going to kind of format it. So what I want to do is I want to take the first three strings, one, two, three, then I want to add a slash and then the next three strings add a slash or a dash uh, and then that be the value that's returned. So it's not super difficult. We're just going to do x and then a bracket. Let me get rid of that. An x and then a bracket and then we want the zero to three. So it goes zero, one, two. So zero, one, two. It doesn't include the three, it goes up to three. So zero, one, two, that's our thir first three values. Then we'll do plus and do a quote and do a dash. So this is our first kind of sequence. And I'm just gonna copy this and we'll do plus. And we're, instead of three, we're, we are gonna start at three because now it's inclusive. So we're gonna go from three and we're gonna go all the way up to six. So it should be three, four, five, our next three values. And then we have a dash. And we'll copy this and we'll say plus. And now we go from six all the way to 10. Now let's try running this. And as you can see, we get an error. Now I already know what the error is. Float object is not subscriptable, which means we're trying to um, basically look at it like a string. But right now it's not a string, it's actually a number. So let me get rid of this for just a second. I want to show you what it's talking about. So right now we have values that are floats and values that are strings or not even a number. So we have values that are strings or not a number. So if we want to actually look through it, like kind of like indexing, if we want to do that, they all have to be strings. So we need to change this entire column into strings before we can apply this um, formatting. Now, when I was creating this, if I'm being honest, my first thought when I was doing this was to do it like this, string DF phone number. Um, let's just run that. This is what the values look like. Um, and I don't remember why or why it was doing this. I can't, I can't remember, but I looked into it quite a bit and I was like, oh, I need to apply this string, converting it to a string on each value not the entire row or not the entire column. So how we can do that is actually fairly easy because we've already done a lot of the heavy lifting. We're just gonna copy this and we're gonna say X do, do, do. so string of X. And again, Lambda is like a little anonymous function. So you could do this by saying for um, X in this uh, column, we could do a for loop and then say for every X, it equals the string of X and then it changes it to a string. But a Lambda just does it a lot quicker. Um, so we're gonna say, so let's do that really quickly. And all of our values look exactly the same and that's how we want it. So we're just going to copy this, apply it. Good. And now we're gonna take this and we're going to run this again. Just ignore all my commented out stuff. Pretend I don't have that. Um, so now when we run this, it should work. There we go. Now if we look at these numbers, one, two, three, dash, five, four, five, dash, five, four, two, one. And it does that for every single one where there's values, even when there's NAN or NA, it's still adding those values. 
but we expected that. So let's apply it, say is equal to, and then we'll look at the data frame. And this looks almost exactly what we're hoping for. We just need to get rid of these. So this NAN dash dash and this NA dash, we need to get rid of those. And that is super easy to do. Um, we're just going to say, so now that we've done it and we'll comment that out, we'll say DF and let's copy this. Ignore the messiness. I do apologize for that. It's very messy. Um, but if you're following along with me, you get what we're doing. So DF phone number. So only on the phone number, say dot string dot replace and open parentheses. Now we can specify this value. So we want to take this exact value and replace it with nothing. And let's just see if that does work. It does. Now we have these NAs. And so we'll, let's actually, I'll paste that right down here. We're going to do this is equal to, and then we're just going to take this entire string, put it right here and put this value as our, what we're looking for and then replacing. And then when we call that data frame, it should work properly and it is perfectly cleaned. So we have every single value, all the exact same. They don't have different characters or different, um, you know, formatting. And we got rid of all the ones that we don't have or don't need. Um, all the ones that were just random values. So this column is now completely cleaned up. Again, definitely one of the more difficult ones. Um, ones that I've done a thousand times. I've had to work with a lot of phone numbers and stuff like that. This one does get very tricky, especially if you have like a plus one, which is like an area code um, that can get tricky as well. But this is on a kind of a high level. This is how you can do that. And it's pretty neat how you can actually, you know, clean up and standardize those phone numbers. So let's go right down here. Uh, let's run it. The next thing that we're going to look at is this address. Now, let's just pretend that the people who are on the call center want all these separated into three different columns. So they can read it easier, see what the zip code is, where they live. Uh, you know, whatever they want it for. Let's just say we want to do that. And this is, you know, again, for this use case, it may not make sense, but you have to do this. I do this all the time. Um, you need to split those columns. Now, luckily, all of these things are separated by a comma. So we can specify that we're going to split on this column and then we'll be able to create three separate columns based off of this one column, which is exactly what we want. And we can name it as well. And we can do that very easily by using this split. So we're going to say DF and we want to specify. Oops. Oh, geez, not again. So we want to specify that we're looking at the address. Then we're going to say dot string dot split. And we'll do an open parentheses. Now, the very first value that we need to specify is what we're splitting on. So we want to split on the comma. So we want to specify that. And then we need to specify how many values from left to right it should look for. Now we'll just start with one and then we'll go from there. Let's just see what this looks like. So doo, doo, doo. it doesn't really look like it did anything. Let's do two. Well, let's go back to one and then let's say expand equals true. When we expand it, it's actually going to uh, separate it, I believe. OK, so we're expanding. We're now we're only doing this with one comma. So we're only looking at the very first comma and splitting it. But in some of these, well, just in one, there is an additional comma. So we should do it up to two. Let's do this. OK, so now we have three columns. If we just save it like this, it's going to give us these zero, one, two, these basically these indexed values for these columns. And we don't want that. We want to specify what these actually are. And we can do that by saying DF. And let me just do is equal to. We'll do bracket and then within there, we're going to specify our list. So we have three of them that we have. So I'm going to do um, the first one. This is the street address. So we'll say street address. The next one is and it's Shire is not a state, uh, but these all are states. So I'm just going to say state. And then for the very last one, that looks like a zip code. So we'll say zip and We'll do underscore code. In fact, I also want to do street underscore address. Um, so what this is now going to do is these three columns are going to be applied to these three names and they'll basically be appended. It doesn't replace the address. We're not saying DF address equals the DF address. We're not replacing it. 
we're now creating different columns. So let's run it and then let's also call it. So they're right over here on this right hand side. I couldn't see them at first, but it did exactly what we needed it to do. So now if we wanted to at the very end, if we want to, we're not going to, we could just delete this address and keep the street address, the state and the zip code. Another really common thing that you can do, this happens often again with like first name, last name, where you have Alex Freeberg, but it's Alex comma Freeberg or Alex space Freeberg. And you can separate those out into different columns. Now the next one that we want to look at is this paying customer and the paying customer and do not contact are very similar um, in the fact that it's yes, no, NY, yes, no, NY. Um, and so let's go right on down here and we're going to say DF dot and we want to just replace these values as all yeses or all nos, but just with the same formatting um, just to keep it consistent. So let's make anything that's an N into a no, anything that's a, a Y into a yes. I like it spelled out. So let's change anything that's uh, a yes into a Y and anything that's uh, a no into an N. That's usually how I do it. Just saves on data because it's less strings, although it's you can be often very minimal. Um, but let's specify the in customer. We'll suit say DF bracket paying customer. Then we'll do dot string dot replace. So now we're just going to look for those specific values. So if it's a Y, oops, a capital Y, then we'll say yes. Now let's run it. And now we have no more Y's. We now just have yeses, although now these are yes, yeses. Okay, we don't want to do that. Let's do if we're looking, because it's taking, <laughs> it's literally looking up here and saying, okay, there's here's a Y. Um, let's change the let's change that Y into a Y E S. So now it's doing Y E S E S. Uh, we don't want that. So let's look for the yes and change it into a Y. Now when we run this. That looks a lot better. Um, so we'll do DF paying customers equal to, and then we'll copy this. We'll do the exact same thing. No, and, and. and then let's call it. And now that entire column looks really good, except for that value right there. But I'm going to leave that because I'm just going to apply it to the entire thing all at once to get rid of those at the end instead of just going column by column. And then it's literally going to be the exact same thing. So I'm not even going to scroll down. Whoops. I'm just going to put it right up here because this is the exact same thing. I'm going to save us all some time. And when we run this, this looks exactly like what we're looking for. Again, some not a number of values, but we can get rid of that in just a second by doing our place over the entire data frame. And that is basically the end of cleaning up individual columns. Now let's go right down here. We're going to say df.string.replace. And then we'll first do these values. Oops. So we'll do, oops, let me do that. So there we go. And replace that with nothing. And let's just see what it looks like. Oops, data frame object has no value string. Well, that's because we were looking at columns before. Yeah, I think I just need to get rid of this string. We're not looking at it. We're just really doing it across the entire data frame. Now let's try that. Okay, that worked appropriately. And we'll just say data frame is equal to. And then we'll copy this. And we'll do the NAN as well. And we'll do And now when we do this, it is not going to replace these because these aren't actually a value because we're looking for that string. We actually need to use, and I, I completely forgot this. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, let's get rid of this. Uh, to get rid of those values, because it's literally not a number. There, It is technically empty. Um, I forgot we can do, um, or we could not even specify it. We'll do df.fillNA. So we're going to fill these values if there's nothing in them. We're going to fill it and we're going to say blank. And when we run that, every value that doesn't have something in it is going to show up blank. Even over here where we only had a few, all of them throughout the data frame, if it doesn't have a value, it is now blank. So let's apply that and we'll run this. And now all of our cleaning 
for actually cleaning up the individual columns is completely done. We've removed columns, we've split columns, we've formatted and cleaned up phone numbers. We've also taken values off of first name or, or this last name column. And then we formatted and just kind of standardized paying customer and do not contact. Now, they also asked us to only give them a list of phone numbers that they can call. So if we take a look, some of these do not contacts are why, which means we cannot contact them. And then there are some that don't even have phone numbers. So we don't want to give the people, the call center numbers that or, or people who don't have numbers. So we want to remove those. Now, there's a few different ways that we can do this, but let's start with and we'll just go by do this. Do not contact. It seems like the most obvious one. Now, if it's blank, we want to give them a call. We only want to not call them if they've specifically said we cannot call them. So if it's why we're not going to call them. So what we need to do, and I don't know, it's not anything like this. We probably need to loop through this column and then look at each row that has a value of this and drop that entire row. Uh, and we probably will need to do that based off this index instead of doing it based off just this column. Uh, that may not make sense, but let's actually let's actually start writing it. So we'll do four X in and we need to look at our index. So we're just going to do let's do in DF dot index and we'll do a colon enter. And then we want to look at these indexes. How do we look at these indexes? We use lock. That's going to be DF dot LOC. And then we need to look at the value, which is this X right here. So each time it looks at the index, it's looking at the value. But we want to look at the value of this column. Do not contact. I don't know if I copied this before. Let me copy it. We only want to look at the value in this one column. If we didn't, it would look at um, a different value. So we don't want that. So we're looking at just that value if it's equal to Y. So if this value is equal to Y, then we want to drop it. So we actually need to say if so if this value X in this column is equal to Y, then we want to do DF dot drop and then we'll say X and we I think we have to say in place equals true here. Otherwise, it won't take effect. Um, otherwise, you have to say like DF is equal to DF dot. Yeah, I don't I don't want to start messing with that. Let's just do in place equals true. Um, and let's see if that works. I. I can't remember if this is going to work or not. Invalid syntax. OK, need a colon. And now let's try to run this. OK, OK, yeah. If we look at our index, we can already tell that there are ones missing. The one the one is missing. The three is missing. Uh, let's see. And the 18 is missing. So we already got rid of those values and you can you can see that there's no Y's in here anymore, uh, which is really good. We can if we want to, and we probably should. We should probably populate that um, really quickly. Um, let me just go up here really quick. I'll copy this. We probably should populate that, and I didn't plan on doing this. So um, if it's blank, oops, if it's blank, give it an N, and we want to attribute it to do not contact. Do not contact. Whoops. Let's see if that works. And we probably need to do dot string. Let's just see if it works. So if it's blank. Dude, OK, I don't know why it's giving us a triple N. Maybe there's maybe I need to strip this or something. Uh, OK, never mind. Let's not do that. But now we basically need to do the exact same thing for this phone number, um, because if it's blank, we don't want them calling it. Um, so we can copy this entire thing go right down here. And but now we're looking at phone number. So now we're looking just at the values within phone number, and we only want to look at if it's blank. So if it literally has no value, we want to get rid of it. Let's run this and see if it works again. It should. Good. And now our list is getting much smaller. So you can see in our index, a lot of um, those rows were removed. And OK, good. Actually, this worked itself out because these all have ends. 
Um, so right now we're sitting really good. Everything looks really um, standardized, cleaned. Everything looks great. I might drop this address. If you want to, you can drop this address. But besides that, this is all looking really good. This paying customer doesn't, uh, the yes and no's aren't really anything. Um, now we could, and we probably should, before we hand this off to the client or the customer call list, we probably should reset this index because they might be confused as why there's numbers missing, or you know they might use this index um, to show how many people they've called, or I don't know, something like that. So let's go right down here. We're gonna say df dot, and then we'll do reset underscore index. And let's just see what this looks like. Um, it does work, but as you can tell, it didn't uh, get rid of that index completely. It actually took the index and saved that original one. We do not need to save that. Whoops, let's put it right in here. Now we're just gonna do drop equals true. And when we do that, it just completely resets. It drops the original index and gives us a new index. And that is what we want. Let's do DF equals. And this is our final product. Now, one thing that I, I you definitely could have done here, um, and I made this a little probably more complicated than it needed to be. Um, that was just how my brain was working at the time when I'm uh, you know, typing this out. We could have done DF dot drop an A. Um, which is literally going to look at these null values um, before we couldn't do that with this one because these aren't we're not looking at na we're looking at y's so we couldn't do that but because we're looking at null values we could have also done drop na um, and done subset is equal to and then done it just on this phone number and then done like this and done in place equals true so we could have also done this uh, and then said df equals. Um, I can't, I mean, I can run it. It's just not going to do anything. I can run it on the different column, but that'll mess everything up. But this is another way you can do it. And I'll just save it in case you want to. Um, I'll say another way to drop null values. There you go. And that'll just be a note for us in the future. Um, but this is our final product. It looks a lot different than when we first started. I mean, we had mistakes here, completely different formatting in the phone number, different address, everything that we just talked about. Um, and this looks just a lot, lot better. And you can tell why it's really important to do this process because again, we're working on a very small data set. I, I purposely you know, created this data set with these mistakes because you know, when you're looking at data that has tens of thousands, a hundred thousands, a million rows, these are all things that are going to be applied to much larger scale and you won't be able to as easily see them. Um, you'll have to do some exploratory data analysis to find these mistakes. And then you're going to need to clean the data or doing it at the same time when you're exploring the data. Uh, so you'll clean it up as you go. But these are a lot of the ways that I clean data. A lot of the things that you can do to make your data just a lot more standardized, a lot more um, visually better. And then it really helps later on with visualizations and your you know, actual data analysis. So I hope that that was helpful. I know that this was a long video. I'm sure it was. Uh, but I hope that you got something out of this and you learned some of the techniques on how to actually clean data in Pandas. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out all my other videos on Pandas as well as Python. And I will see you in the next video.